St. Basil grew up in a religious family. His father, St. Basil the Elder, helped his son to grow in piety, but died when St. Basil of Caesarea was still very young. The large family moved to the home of St. Basil's grandmother, Macrina, where she continued to foster St. Basil's faith. St. Basil began his education in Caesarea, where he met Bishop Deanius. He continued his studies in Constantinople and then in Athens, where he met lifelong friend Gregory of Nianzius. St. Basil was extremely intelligent, and he excelled in all subjects. Under both Christian and pagan teachers, he grew a knowledge of philosophy, mathematics, and medicine. When St. Basil left Athens, he had become filled with all the learning attainable by the nature of man, and had no other need than that of spiritual perfection. Basil followed in his father's footsteps and became a professor in Caesarea. However, his time in the world of academia had left an imprint upon his soul. Basil was no longer the young boy who had been instructed in faith, but a man who was only concerned with the matters of the world. He led a life that he described as miserable and abandoned God for things of the earth. He was filled with the sin of materialism, but he sought greater meaning in life. In St. Basil's era, most people were very materialistic, and the future saint was no different. His attitude, although in line with that of society, opposed the virtue of generosity. It also violated what Christ defined as the second greatest commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, because St. Basil focused on his own personal gain, not what he could do to help others in his community. Unfortunately, even when St. Basil eventually overcame his selfishness, the community surrounding him was still consumed by earthly things. Materialism was a social sin in St. Basil's community, and it surrounded him wherever he went. Fortunately, St. Basil had always demonstrated natural virtues. He aimed to do the right thing by working hard and striving for perfection. Even when he strayed from God through sin, St. Basil tried to be a good citizen by providing education for the privileged in his community. However, St. Basil's natural virtues would not have been adequate to lead the people of Caesarea as he did in later years. For that, he needed theological virtues. Luckily, before he fell too deep into the pit of sin, St. Basil encountered his childhood mentor, Bishop Deanius, who continued St. Basil's education and faith. Of his return to Catholicism, St. Basil said, then I read the gospel and saw that a great means of reaching perfection was the selling of one's goods, the sharing of them with the poor, the giving up of all care for this life, and the refusal to allow the soul to be turned by any sympathy towards things of the earth. This quote represents St. Basil's complete transition from a man of the world to a man of God. It speaks to St. Basil's work, including his ordination and building of a hospital later in life. After St. Basil's reevaluation of his life, he came to understand the greatness of God and was baptized in the Jordan River by Bishop Deanius. At this point, St. Basil acquired the theological virtue of faith. He began to trust in the Lord, which set him on a very different path from that of any other professor in Caesarea. St. Basil's belief in God would lead him to abandon material things and send him on a journey to union with God through service to others. He founded a monastery in Pontus, his hometown. He systemized the monastic system and went on to write his own monastic rules. St. Basil's rigidity and ability to organize would prove helpful when he founded a hospital for the poor. Basil also became an ascetic, meaning that he dressed, ate, and lived simply. By this point, St. Basil had completely changed his way of life. He had transformed from a selfish and brainy educator into a humble and simple person of faith. By the year 363, St. Basil had been ordained a priest and held a high position in the diocese, now governed by Bishop Eusebius. On June 14, 370, St. Basil was ordained to the See of Caesarea. During the rule of Bishop Eusebius, St. Basil had displayed an affinity for the care of the poor, sick, and lonely. When he became the Bishop of Caesarea, he built the Basiliad. This structure was both a home for the homeless and a training center for the unskilled, but it functioned mainly as a medical treatment center for the poor, a sort of ancient hospital. This suburban institution became the heart of a new city, and soon Basiliads began to pop up all around Asia Minor. Perhaps because of his education and materialism in early life, St. Basil was one of the few church officials of his time to recognize the responsibility of the church to care for the material needs of its members, the faithful, the body of Christ. Because of this recognition, he founded the Basiliad, which was the first hospital of its kind in the world. St. Basil devoted his time to service in the hospital, which aided victims of famine and disease. Through his work at the Basiliad, St. Basil demonstrated his development of the theological virtue of charity. 
He clearly portrayed his friendship with God by not only accepting, but also caring for the most unfortunate in his society, the poor, ill citizens of Caesarea. St. Basil also used the Basiliad as a reminder to the rich of their good fortune and encouraged them to give their earthly wealth to his hospital as a form of renouncing worldly things in order to turn their attention towards heavenly things. He wanted the rich to mimic his own transition from the sense of conceit and materialism to the virtues of humility and generosity. In this way, he worked to eradicate the social sin of his time. Through blending his correction with consideration and his gentleness with firmness, St. Basil created a successful medical institution. St. Basil's natural virtue to do right by serving others was evidenced by his choice to become a professor. However, he perfected this virtue and achieved the theological virtue of charity when he chose to serve others as a result of his deep love for God. St. Basil exemplifies the following quote from Mother Teresa, There is only one love, and this is the love of God. Once we love God deeply enough, we will love our neighbor to the same extent, because as we grow in our love for God, we grow to respect all that he has created and to recognize and appreciate all the gifts he has given us. Then naturally, we want to take care of them all. Through the foundation of the Basiliad, St. Basil started the rich social tradition in the Catholic Church of caring for the sick. The work he began is continued today through Catholic hospitals, Catholic relief services, and other such institutions. Perhaps it is partly because of St. Basil that we associate the word charity with giving of possessions and service to the poor and sick. Because of his devotion to the poor, many of St. Basil's friendships declined. Although this was difficult for him, the benefits of his works helped to strengthen his faith in God. He maintained belief that, despite challenges, he would eventually be rewarded for his good deeds on earth, thereby demonstrating his theological virtue of hope. How would St. Basil's life have been different had he never believed in God? Without the development of his theological virtues, specifically charity, as a result of his relationship with God, St. Basil would never have founded the Basiliad. He would have continued to teach while ignoring the sick and suffering of his community. He would have remained unhappy in his materialistic life. In short, St. Basil's belief in God made all the difference in his life and enabled him to view his community as the body of Christ, a population that he needed to serve. He chose to serve through providing medical treatment for the sick and was motivated by hope and charity, even when his friends abandoned him. He started the tradition of care for the sick through the foundation of the Basiliad and recognized that it was the church's responsibility to care for the physical needs of its ill members. His tradition has been maintained throughout history and continues in the health care services provided by Catholic institutions today. St. Basil died in 379. He has been canonized in both the Eastern and Western churches. He is the patron saint of hospital administrators and has been given the honorable title of Doctor of the Church. By personal virtue, he attained distinction in an age of saints, and his purity, his monastic fervor, his stern simplicity, his friendship for the poor, became traditional in the history of Christianity.